When I first started playing Raid back in 2019, Warlord was actually one of the most wanted legendary champions. Not just the Void Lego, but just the legendary champion in general. Everybody wanted him. Because if you wanted to dominate PvP, Warlord was the champion to have on your team. And so here he is, you can see him, he's from the Orc faction, he looks okay. I mean, he, he doesn't really stand out as an Orc, but I mean, you, you guys know, if you don't already know, he he's a, a legacy champion. You pretty much already know what he looks like, and you know that you should be intimidated by him. And look at this long stick, I'm gonna slap you in the face. So again, when we're talking about PvP, the number one thing about Warlord that he does that makes you want to ban him in something like Live Arena or maybe even avoid a fight in Classic Arena has to be his A3. It's an AoE with a 100% wow. chance to place your skills on cooldown or if he's on your side, you can put your enemy's team skills on cooldown. But not only that, he has a booked up 60% chance to fully deplete each target's turn meter. You pretty much already won the fight because once he locks your skills out, it's pretty much a wrap. You'd have to have like a really tanky team or be really lucky to not lose that fight. The other thing that's annoying about him is his A2. Places a block debuff on all of your team for one turn and then places a shield equal to 30% of his max HP. And then he also heals by 25% of their max HP. So everybody's getting a heal, everybody's getting a shield, everybody's getting block buffs. His A1 also has a 25% hooks up to a 40% chance of increasing the duration of all debuffs on the target by one turn. And that's all debuffs. His aura gives your entire team a resistance increase by 80 points. Needless to say, this guy has a kit that makes you just want to avoid him completely. Back when I first summoned Warlord, it was during a time where there was no stone skin. So the only things you really had to worry about were making Warlord fast and accurate. As fast and as accurate as possible. And if you had the gear for it, you could put him in immunity so that you wouldn't get frozen from torment at the start of a round or there weren't any debuffs that could be placed on you. But now, things are a little bit different. We have stone skin. So the new meta for Warlord, if you have him, and I suggest you do try to build this if you do have a Warlord, is put him in a stone skin build. Now, a one turn of stone skin is going to do just fine, but if you can bang out two turns, I would bang out two turns. In fact, I do have a uh, an amulet here, a stone skin amulet, but uh, the reason I don't want to put this is because I'd be missing out on 44 points of accuracy, and I kind of need that. So I'm waiting on the right stone skin piece to fall on my lap, and when I do, then I'll be putting Warlord in two turns of stone skin. But then again, as always with anybody's account, you do what you can with whatever gear that you have. Sometimes you might just have to have a broken set, if it means that you can be like 50 points faster or 50 points more accurate. Uh, you know, it kind of depends, you kind of just have to um, uh, really think about what works best for your account. But for me, this is what I have on him. I have Perception which increases his accuracy and increases his speed and then stone skin to make sure that uh, there's no debuffs that can be put on me and that he pretty much survives any nukes from the beginning. Especially in this day and age when you're going up against somebody like Armands, who usually starts with his A2, that is not going to affect Warlord. Uh, you know, I mean, you can still sheep him if you're in like Laverina and they choose to sheep Warlord first through the stone skin, but still there is a 50-50% chance of that happening. Other than that, anybody who tries to hit Warlord, even if they're nuking, more often than not, they're going to be hitting a rock wall doing nothing. Here are the total stats. I went for high HP so that we could increase the size of the shield that we place, as well as a decent amount of defense, so 3.5. I do want him to survive, so I do place some importance on HP and on defense as well. Now, as always, with Warlord, the things that you're worried about are being fast and accurate. Obviously, not everybody can reach 300 speed or 600 accuracy or a mix of both. Um, so, so again, for you and for your account, if you're a newer player who happens to have Warlord, you should just try to build him as fast and as accurate as possible, whatever that means, okay? So, like, what is fast? If you're in, like, Gold 5 Arena, if that's where you're hanging out, I'd say like 250, around 250 plus, 500 accuracy, 500 accuracy plus. You can get away with a little bit less, especially in gold five. If you're up in 
of the higher echelons of arena like if you're trying to do uh trying to do plat or if you're in live gold arena you definitely want to be pushing about 300 uh speed and somewhere north of 600 accuracy if you could get to 700 accuracy that would be even better in fact i used to have warlord um a lot faster with about 700 accuracy but i actually broke his build to put that gear on yumiko instead by the way, if you want to see a guide on Yumiko, I'll link that at the end of this video. But that's what you should worry about. Speed and accuracy. And then some resistance, if you can bang out some resistance, but I don't worry too much about it. If uh, So I don't have a blessing on this Warlord, but if you want to, you could put Intimidating Presence on him, and that will strengthen your team's aura and weaken the enemy team's aura. But if you have somebody else in your team that already has this, I would suggest trying something else, something like um, Polymorph so that you have a chance of shaping your opponents, or Temp Chains. And Temp Chains is going to decrease enemy speed for each active buff that's on the opposite team. So those are some good blessings uh, if you want to have those blessings. When it comes to Masteries, as always, do not blindly copy Masteries, but go ahead and blindly copy these Masteries. Basically taking extra res, decreasing crit damage received, increasing healing and shield that he receives, as well as Shadow Heal to heal whenever the enemy heals. Resurgence to have a chance to randomly remove one debuff whenever he loses 25% or more of his max HP. Ally Res increase for every buff that is placed. So remember, he does place shields and block buffs. That increases the res for everybody on your entire team. Then we're taking Delay Death for some damage mitigation. We're taking Cycle of Revenge so that whenever an ally is hit with a crit hit, we have a 50% chance of increasing our turn meter. And then we have Retribution for a 50% chance to counterattack whenever he loses 25% or more of his HP from a single skill. Now, no matter where you are, I highly suggest you take the support tree to take all this extra accuracy. It doesn't matter if you're in the beginning or in the end of the game, I highly suggest it. And Evil Eye is also a very nice skill to take so that with his A1, he's going to be pushing back turn meter. I mean, if you're starting out with his A3, you'd be pushing back turn meter anyway, but you know. Then Sniper to increase the chance of placing debuffs from skills or artifacts. And so I think, I'm pretty, if you know, I, I'm not exactly sure, increasing the cooldown um, is also affected by Sniper. So taking this, I think, influence, somebody has to fact check me on that. Please let me know in the comments down below. But I think Sniper will increase the chance of placing the increased cooldown with his A3. And you're definitely going to want to take Eagle Eye for extra accuracy, especially if you're missing uh, out on accuracy and you can't seem to hit certain thresholds. Obviously, when it comes to Warlord, he is basically going to mainly be a PvP champion. So right here, you saw that he started with his A3. Everybody's skills were put on cooldown. And not only that, he also pushed everybody's turn meter back so that our team could ensure that we're going to go first. He's paired with our Mons, it's pretty much a no-brainer that the other, um, the opposite team isn't really going to have a chance to take a turn. If you're going up against a team that you think is going to be faster, you could pair it. Like if you have, obviously not everybody's going to have uh, these champions, but you know something that you could try if you do have happen to have these champions is throwing in Tormund because Tormund is basically an anti-speed champion, and we can uh, go ahead and do our own thing here. So they're going to boost speed, half of them got frozen, and Warlord was able to push back turn meter here, and we're going to go ahead and swipe through everybody using Rotos. And yeah, we're pretty much on the safe side with this type of team here. As you can see, they're only ever going to be able to do their A1 because Warlord put, took away everybody's chance to use uh, their active skills. And that is the power of having Warlord or just any cooldown champion on your team. Okay, we're going to try this team here. We're going to use Grand Oak Padrig and Sun Wukong in this team along with Armands and Warlord. And I want to show you guys what happens when we go up against a Armands with Warlord in Stone Skin and why I think it's very valuable to have him even though um, Armands usually goes first and he does... Oh, I guess he gets Polymorph this time. So you see the debuff, uh, the deep, uh, the block debuffs is, is kicking in. Uh, Ray does smack everybody, but I'm not too worried yet because we have SWK who's going to come back. But here, we're going to push everybody's turn meter back. Warlord is unaffected. And he's still sheep, so that's a good sign. And we have Sun Wukong. So we're going to place a shield and a heal on everybody. Shields are 
very OP in this game because we're able to survive through a lot. And we're going to hit. And Armand is right there. We're going to make sure he's very well taken care of. Push that back. Let's just go ahead and do this. And that's uh, a decent fight there. Needless to say, his survivability skills, as well as his ability to push back turn meter and increase cooldowns are going to help out in the orc faction crypts to help you clear that out. In clan boss, I wouldn't suggest using him in clan boss uh, unless you don't have anybody else, neither in Hydra. So when it comes to the dungeons, I don't really think that Warlord is one of the best champions to use. In the dungeons, I feel like there's so many other options for wave clearing. He could probably help for... Um, decreasing turn meter he could probably help because those are full turn meter depletions but yeah i don't really see him being used too often in dungeons but you can let me know if i'm wrong in live arena all the things that you saw him bring into classic arena shines the same way that it does in live arena except that you know people often do ban warlord and sometimes they even ban warlord over yumiko who i think is a very strong champion yumiko is like um warlord and kaimar had a baby together 